This is Twit. Hello, Patrick. Hello, Ryan. I have actually, I'm not going to horn in on your show, but I, Patrick, you're going to be on the new screensavers this week. True. And I have a modest proposal for you, and I want to oh. run it by. <laughs> I want to run I'm it by you. Not eating any babies, Leo. <laughs> Let's get that out there right now. I do have to say that this is this is, by the way, the new uh, 2018 MacBook Pro, and uh, I I am the, I've never been a fan of that keyboard. I hate the Touch Bar too. I think a lot no. of people know that. I do feel like this keyboard is subtly different, and it's you know I think the silicone seal, which is clearly there also has the benefit of kind of giving you a little bit more uh, resilience when you tap. I just feel like there's such a short travel on these keys that it stubs your fingers almost. And it's hard for me to type accurately on this. I had a MacBook. I had the 13-inch. I've, I've tried them all. This one seems marginally better. But really, the reason I'm here is to ask you about the i9. And I think you all saw Dave Lee, YouTuber Dave Lee's uh, review of the i9-based MacBook Pro, in which... He said it was throttling. Uh, the, the i9 wasn't running at full speed because of heat. He used a couple of ways to demonstrate this. One was to recompile a Premiere project. Uh, and he showed how much slower it was as it got hotter. He put it in the freezer, and it performed much better. So uh, there's the freezer uh, video. Uh, the bottom bar is in the freezer. The, the top bar is not in the freezer. You can see shorter is better, the much better performance in the freezer. <laughs> uh, so, uh, and I know this has been a problem. I've seen this, uh, others complain about this in the i7 for years, even on those wonderful Lenovo ThinkPads. There are i9, uh, uh, I think Dell has an i9, uh, Dex PS 15. There's some other ones. I don't know if they're experiencing throttling. But I thought we should test this on Saturday. Now, I'm waiting. I, I want to see what PC Perspective and non-tech, the, the real, people who really know what they're doing. Not, Dave's good, but I want to see some real laboratory results before I say that this is an issue. <laughs> the, Dave said, and he's, he's, it's, he's got a good point, there's no obvious redesign of the cooling subsystem in here. Right. Even though you've got now six cores on the i9 running at 2.9 gigahertz and up. Uh, so there's a lot... But what somebody pointed out, and I think this is an interesting point, and I think, Ryan, you've already tipped to this, is that when you're doing that Premiere Pro uh, uh, rendering, it's using the CPU and the GPU, both are pegged, which, of course, is going to be the hottest possible scenario in this thing, right? Yeah. So there's a couple of things I'm going to try. One is, one of the reasons I wanted this is for compiling software. That's very bursty. You know, if, if it compiles in 20 seconds, it's probably not going to see much throttling, and it may be a real benefit. But the other thing I want to try, this is the eGPU, which, interestingly, Apple announced at the same time. They don't make this. this Black Magic makes this. It has a somewhat, not a, it's not a top of the line. It's not a 1080 Ti Radeon, uh, NVIDIA in here. It's still a Radeon. What is it, a 580, I think it is? 580, yeah. yeah. So, but it's an eGPU. And Apple recently updated Mac OS to automatically support it. I noticed when I plugged it in over the Thunderbolt, the 40 gigabyte Thunderbolt 3 port, it immediately saw it on the MacBook Pro and started using it. In fact, believe it or not, I've just been doing updates and the MacBook Pro is hot and the eGPU is, is perceptibly mm -hmm. warmer. But my theory is, and I think we can maybe test this, it's not a laboratory, but we can kind of get some sense of it. What if it is the fact that both the GPU and the CPU were pegged, causing a huge amount of thermals in here? What if you mm -hmm. use the eGPU? What if this is why Apple's pushing the eGPU to take some of that load off? So we're not going to do it with Premiere Pro. Uh, we're going to do it with Final Cut because presumably that's going to be optimized for Apple hardware. <laughs> that's a brazen assumption. Well, but I think it's <laughs> fair to say that. And, and certainly... Uh, you know, I don't know what Adobe's incentive is to optimize for Apple hardware. I haven't seen them optimize Photoshop or Lightroom for Apple hardware. So let's let's give Apple the benefit of the doubt and use Final Cut Pro 10. I think most people who buy this, this is a $4,000 laptop, are going to probably use Final Cut anyway, right? Um, so I, will, I, I think I was... So what do you think of that? That's my modest proposal, that maybe it's a, it's a GP and an eGPU might solve that if that's what you need to do. Um, it solves it as long as you're at home. Well, I admit it, it's not a portable solution You could take anymore. your $6,000. Yeah. Yeah. This, uh, this thing's heavy. It's really a docking station. It has all these extra yeah. ports on the back, plus a GPU. And it's not, <laughs> and by the way, at 700 bucks. it's not upgradable. So that's not good. But 
it's, it's does, good does, for black magic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and only, it's exclusive to Apple, so it's good for Apple, too, because they take their cut at the Apple store. So together now, we're getting $5,000. This is $5,000 worth of hardware. Uh, you know, I, I, I mean, I, first of all, I guess my cup two questions. Are we seeing okay. i9? I know we've seen this in the past with i7. i9 heat throttling in other machines? It's not that many machines that run i9s. Yeah, there's uh -huh. the Dell X15. Yeah, it's the only one I know of. And yeah. most of the time they're Maybe using, the they're also in larger... Uh, yeah, more gaming centric. You look at those gaming things. They got giant tornado yeah. fans in the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's because I, I the, think, the look how thin this is, and the only vent is in the crack. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> between the screen and the body. I mean, this thing is not designed for yeah. heat dissipation. Even if it's a, a, a unibody aluminum. I look but that's at the. Not. I look at his results very simplistically and pragmatically. Right. Right. He rendered a video which is something yeah. that a ton of people who buy MacBook Pros are going to do. do. Yeah. Um, regardless of what software they're using, video rendering is a terrific benchmark and use case for yeah. this. And it's kind of, um, it's impossible to me that Apple didn't do this testing with their device and come to the same conclusion immediately. That, oh, as it turns out, it's slower than the other variant. Yeah, because it is a long extended workload. You use the term bursty to talk about some other workloads. Compiling can be, but if you have a lar larger compiling job, if you're in, in, mm -hmm. you know, encoding well, or, or the guy who compiling wrote Blender, for example, it's going to take a while. The guy who wrote Geekbench uh, didn't have an i9, but he did with the i7. He did 10 compiles of Geekbench and did yeah. not see throttling. So that was a half an hour yeah. of nonstop compiling. Note, Notebookcheck.net posted something today where they did successive runs of uh, Cinebench, which is a GPU rendering. No, I'm sorry. It's a CPU rendering app. And so it does not use the GPU. It's only using the CPU. And it had dramatic fall off right. after the first couple yeah. I'm uh, a little nervous about synthetic benchmarks. I would prefer to see things well, like the sure. Premier Pro. So rendering. we were talking before the show. Uh, I had a friend of mine who who bought the maxed out Surface Book. It's like $3,300, um, you know, an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 925 or 965 uh, GPU, which is not that powerful, but certainly a big step up from the Intel graphics. 16 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte SSD. And he's like, it's a dog. What do you mean it's a dog? You spent $3,300. He's like, it's a delete expletive dog. And I did something really simple. I just ran uh, my favorite way to torture uh, laptops, which is Handbrake and desktops, right? Um, Handbrake, a uh, friend of mine who, who, who works for a company that can spend anything they want on any rendering tool anywhere basically uses Handbrake. It's good enough for them. It's good enough for me. And, you know, I fired up this $3,300 machine, uh, which had a you know top of the line like Core i7 CPU. It's got NVIDIA GeForce. Blah 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 blah. Uh, and it also basically has no fan. And it within literally probably the first 30 seconds of a 10 minute render. What 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 should have been a 10 minute render? You know it throttled up and then it just slowed down. Yeah. And it was brutal because you know my. Like at this point, generation previous Core i5 with half as much RAM was running faster than a brand new state of the art $3,300 flagship machine from one of the largest tech companies in the world. Um, it's not just Apple doing this. Like, you know, sure. let's do thin, let's do inadequate cooling, let's do maybe cooling that's okay. Well, we can, we can dissipate 45 watts, you know, for this long. This... And it's, it's, go ahead. Uh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say this is this is a this is a this is a trade off. This is a decision yeah. that manufacturers are making, as you're as you're pointing out, right? That the number of people that do long sustained work on their machine, rendering a video, uh, uh, compiling code, yeah. um, whatever it happens to be, is is small, and it's also a small portion of your time. Yeah, but and if not, it's not the a small portion of your time. These devices. That's exactly who buys these devices. Well, yeah, but, but I would. That's who they're aiming at. This is a you know, pro I've, device. I've, I have. I've, I'm. I, I've. I was. I was working at a place a few years ago where they bought brand new laptops for the executive team, um, while the editing team was still using two-year-old desktops. And I bring this up because in a lot of cases, there's a lot of people spending a lot of money on hardware, and they basically they run Excel spreadsheets. 
and they use the web and they use Google Docs and they use, you know, okay, but um, Slack Apple, or whatever. Apple but has it, a product line. They have a MacBook, which is an executive computer. This Apple is aiming at pros. And so regardless of what morons buy it, if <laughs> we what we want to know is if the people who are going to buy it for those purposes, the purposes Apple's specifying, photographers, sure. developers, sure. music makers, and filmmakers, if this is inadequate, then we need to know this. I, I would give generally give Apple the benefit of the doubt on this. Uh, you know, one thing we don't know, Dave Lee's computer, maybe he got a sample that didn't have the thermal paste, wasn't done right. Or, sure. There's all sorts of possibilities. I want to see this same result across the board with a lot of different computers before yeah. I'm going to run to rush to judgment. And I know we'll do the an imperfect test, but I think we ought to do something like this on Saturday. On Absolutely. The Saturday I, th I think that's see. a great idea. I think it's a yeah. great idea. And, and I think basically just duplicate what he's done and then add in this part where you add in the external GPU and see if it, what, what I think will happen, if I'm going to guess here, is that it will cut the difference between the two platforms, but it mm -hmm. won't uh, we'll fix it. won't kill it completely. Yeah. yeah. And what I was going to say before is the yes, the professionals are buying these to do those renderings, but you're not rendering eight hours a day. You might be editing right. and right. working in Premiere, but that last that final output cut render takes 35 minutes of your day, type of thing. So well, does um, it yeah, still but, does it still make sense then to buy it? for the other stuff you're doing? No. So that's really the question. Should I buy an i9? Should I buy an i7? Maybe I should just buy an i5. <laughs> because if I'm not going to get the full uh, yeah. performance out of the i9 or the i7, there's no point in spending more for it. Well, it's a it's a it's it's a real problem, right? Because you want the discrete graphics because that's going to accelerate a broad range of things that are going not everything uh, cuz Adobe's code base continues to be weird. Um, and, well, but and, uh, Intel's know, hasn't updated their Iris Pro in how many years? Two years. Well, but it's years? it's just it, there. It'll it, you know it's going to be at least two years before there's anything from Intel you, you're going to slap in the general direction right. of of Premiere or or the Creative Suite and and make much of a difference. Uh, the, the issue is is that. Like Ryan's right. Yeah, you may only spend 35 minutes a day rendering, you know. But if you're doing if you're doing a whole bunch of processing work, um, it is a big deal. If you think you're going to go like I last time I bought a new laptop and spent six thousand dollars, I cut twenty percent off my rendering time. What if your rendering time goes up because this thing is so thermally throttled? What that would if, be really bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I really mean, it's, feel ripped off. <laughs> You know, I went. I, went should, the, I would so, agree. It should never have gone up. Like, if it right. worst case scenario for me should have been like, oh, this turned out to have the same render time as the last generation quad core, right? That right. means you've properly balanced the thermals with the clock speed uh, uh, tables that you have in place for this particular design, right? It, the, the fact that it goes down is kind of crazy. Yeah. In theory. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that there are other use cases for six cores. That mm -hmm. do make sense. Most of the mm -hmm. most of the things we do, except for these high end uh, professional tools, are only using one core anyway. The higher clock speed of the i9 might be a benefit there, but there are other things you do. Maybe if I have, you know, I'm doing three different things at once, and each is using a separate core. I usually use something, and I did this on the iMac Pro, and I will compare this, by the way, to the uh, 10 core iMac Pro as well. Uh, I, I use something called iStat Pro, which is widely used among Mac people to give you a look at thermals mm -hmm. and CPU mm -hmm. uh, performance. And so we'll put that on here as well so we can kind of see. Yeah. I guess Intel has a tool as well. I don't, I, mean, I might put Geek Bitch on here. I don't really like synthetic benchmarks all that much. <laughs> I don't know. Synth what do you think? I, I understand that. I understand that mentality. But synthetic benchmarks or so, – so you, I mentioned Cinebench before. Cinebench is a benchmark, but Cinebench – it's actually like doing that, stuff. That Cinema 4D yeah. is a well-known yeah. right. and used rendering engine, right? So, yeah. uh, the the Cinebench part of it just lets us do it in a repeatable, you know, more scientific fashion. Right. You know, ironically, yeah. this laptop plus GPU is roughly the same cost as the base model iMac Pro. I think <laughs> Apple. No, I seriously think that Apple is looking at this new MacBook Pro as a reasonable mobile version of an iMac Pro. It doesn't have 10 or 32 cores, but it's it's. I think you're right, Patrick. If you have to carry this around, you've defeated the entire purpose of it. This is a lot. Yeah, I mean, it's it's and, and it's it's frustrating because you you know a lot of people abandon. You know, Apple stopped 
doing really good support for Final Cut a few years ago, and then Adobe. I mean, Adobe, and this is going back a few years, that there is one application that I know of in the history of Adobe, and some of their applications are pretty long in the tooth at this point. There is one application where they went, you know what? It's a teardown. And they started over fresh. And that was Premiere. Because the original version of Premiere was such a hot mess. They could not they 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 couldn't put a bag on the side of the box. They couldn't fix it in any way. And they re-architected it from the ground up. And they started talking to, you know, they basically went to people other than auteurs and and college film students and said, How do you use Final, you know, well, how do you use Final Cut? And what do you wish Final Cut had? And then Premiere built out all of these tools for professionals. And around that time, uh, Apple's hardware started getting more expensive again. They dropped all of their backend support, you know, for the networking stuff, uh, for the enterprise stuff, uh, and a lot of people just went, eh, whatever. And they they basically Premiere's pretty good, and they shifted over to Premiere. And when Apple does something like this, where it's like, you know, we know you've been waiting for a decent CPU upgrade for two years. Here it is, and it arrives. And the first thing that happens is somebody goes to render a video. And if you're on, you know, you if you're a pretty frantic kind of, you don't want to, you. Yeah, and think about that. You know, you you've bought like, a, you've spent several thousand dollars on a laptop. You fire up Premiere or what a Final Cut Pro or whatever you're using. You hit that button. You're like, yeah, this is where my hair blows back. And you know, because I had that experience, I I, I cut my render time by two thirds in 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 two processors in the space of about eighteen months. And I love AMD Ryzen's. They make me happy. Um, but to to spend that much money on a hardware upgrade that people have waited so long for, and then to have it be like, um, we should have put more cooling in, really sucks. Even if it is only for a small percentage of the user base, that's ugly. That is ugly thermals right there. Yeah, that is some ugly, ugly heat mapping. Well, again, right this there. is all based on one YouTuber who is uh, credible, but mm -hmm. not not more than one, and so. Uh, you know, I, and even what we do here will not be, you know, definitive. I want to see what you do at PC Perspective. I want to see what another <laughs> does. I'd like to see some people who are used, to, who are really doing this kind of thing, uh, and get some idea of the throttles. I won't uh, the throttling. I won't uh, interrupt your show any longer. I have some work to do to get this set up. Uh, have a great show. But I, so you think this is a reasonable? Uh, I, th I gather you think this is a reasonable test that we'll we'll do on on Saturday. I'm gonna yeah. go get some. Yeah, no. And we're gonna yeah, do it on, not on Premiere, although we are, as you know, a Premiere house. This show is edited with Premiere, mm -hmm. but but I'm gonna do it with Final Cut, uh, presuming that giving Apple every opportunity, that's gonna be optimi best <laughs> optimized for the Apple hardware, and we'll see. We'll it's very kind of you to do so, but it's okay to run your <laughs> applications in a real world scenario because. Think about it. If you don't like synthetic applications or synthetic benchmarks, why in the world would you give Apple the benefit of the doubt by going to Final Cut well, Pro? Well, because I think saying. most people who use this hardware are using Final Cut Pro. Pro. It's two hundred bucks. Uh, yeah. It's not a. It's not a subscription. There's a lot of reasons why you might want to use Final Cut Pro. Okay. And if you're buying Apple hardware, I would bet you're probably using. I mean, we we use it uh, Premiere on Dells. We yeah. we weren't going to buy that that 2013 Mac Pro, and it turned out that was no. the right decision. <laughs> yeah. It was a very good decision. Yeah. 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 Oh, and by goodness. the way, I, that's by the way, Apple did admit that the reason they can't upgrade that thing is thermals. Yep. I don't know. There's 45 watt TPUs, and there's 45 watt TPUs, and then there's 45 watt TPUs yeah. with discrete GPU and all. Hey, Patrick, do you loose. have one of those temperature guns uh, we can use? Uh, you know, I literally own three of them. Would you bring it to, <laughs> on Saturday? We could, I will put it in my bag. I've just been doing the updates, and this thing is hotter than hell. Right here, yeah. it is burn. It is burning up. I almost well, can't. Then, I almost can't touch it. And I haven't done anything but download files. So, <laughs> so that's so not a good sign. That's not a good sign. <laughs> that's not yeah, a good sign. I mean, that shot from Dave Lee's video where there was the big yeah. smiley face with the giant glowy spot, the giant glowy spot in the middle and the smiley face, yeah. that's basically the processor and whatever venting they have in there. And that's probably a little hotter than it should be. Yeah. Um, is that a real just cat to, or is that a, just something you pop in and try <laughs> This is a real cat. Because <laughs> <Okay. laughs> it looks a little like the Brad Sam's pop in, I'm just saying. <laughs> I really wish, I, yeah, somebody quick grab a picture of the cat. <laughs> thank you guys, um, I appreciate your time. Thank you, Thanks. see you on Saturday. See you Saturday, Patrick. It'll be a lot of fun. Definitely. All right, take care.